There is a myth about why dragons and humans should live together in harmony. The legend says that a human princess gave birth to a dragon and a human. The humans spent their life in a village while the dragon went to the forest. But there was this conflict between the two of them. They were angry with each other and fought for some time until they learned that they are brother and sister. They come from the same mother. That's why we need to do everything we can to protect them. Komodo dragons is quite unique. It lives only just in Indonesia. You cannot find it anywhere else in the world. It's an apex predator in these islands. There's no other bigger predator on the land than them. The beauty of Komodo dragons is that being the most charismatic reptile in the planet, there still be so much to do for them. And there still be so much to learn that we don't know. My name is Gerardo. I'm head of the ectotherms department at Chester Zoo. Beginning of my projects with Komodo dragons it started already uh, more than 12 years ago. When I started with this project, I wanted to know what it will be the key fundamental conservation question. They told me that the most important question that we need to address is where they live. And I thought, come on, you've been working with dragons. We're talking about the most popular reptile in the planet, but we don't even know where the dragon lives. How are you going to protect the species that you don't know where it lives? So the biggest challenge was to find the funding and the support for multiple years to survey the big island of Flores, which is huge. So that was the baseline of the project. I have been working with Komodo dragon for nearly 20 years. There are around 3,000 Komodo dragon on Komodo National Park. Apart from Komodo National Park, Komodo dragon can also be found on Flores Island. We estimate that there are less than 1,000 Komodo dragon on Flores Island. So thanks to all the partnerships that we have, we have identified the different populations on the coastal areas of Flores. We have an understanding the distribution of the species, so we can just narrow down where we have to put the efforts. So when the team was put in the baited traps and catch the dragons, the important information they were extracting from that is accumulation information that it comes from the very beginning, 20 years ago. And you, what you do immediately, obviously, is restrain the animal for the safety of the animal and ourselves. Second one is understanding is which animal it is. So they have an implanted a microchip. And then the next one is taking morphometric measurements. That means how big the animal has been growing, what is the weight, what is the size. And then it gives you, after many years, you can really understand the growth rates of the animals, the differences between females and males, and how it changes between the islands. This information is vital to understand if the populations are stable, they're recovering, or there is any signs that the things are going worse. And unfortunately, it has been upgraded to endangered species. The major threats that the dragons are living today is the impact on climate change, which is going to affect the species that live on coastal areas. Komodo dragons live nearby the coast, not higher than 400 meters, and we know very well that climate change is going to affect the sea levels. So that automatically is going to affect the population. Habitat alteration, fragmentations. So little by little, these pockets of dragons are, the, are tiny and tiny and more spread it. So that is, it's not helping the communication between them and be a stable populations. Disappearance of prey items, we're talking about a buffaloes, deers, wild bulls. And then is the human conflict. You know, some of the areas like in the islands of Flores, it's not as popular that it will be in the touristic sites in Komodo and Rinca. So that harmony with the communities is what they're working at the moment to minimize or mitigate our threats. That was the beginning of the next level, how you work now with the communities to protect the species. The heart of conservation is to engage people who share their daily life with wildlife. 
This is why it is very important to evoke the conservation spirit at the heart of people who coexist with Komodo dragons. It is natural for us to fear reptiles. For the community living on Komodo Island specifically, the locals believe that the dragon is the twin brother of their ancestor and that makes them all share the bloodline with Komodo dragons. This region is the only habitat among all distribution areas where the dragon has cultural significance. The Komodo dragon's habitat spans across a province in Indonesia and it consists of places with different cultures, tribes, and customs. In the region inside the national park, people do feel a shared history with them, but this is absent in that forest. However, now with various programs designed by our organization, people have seen them as animals that deserve to roam freely in their backyard. The ultimate aim of my work is connecting the needs of conservation in situ in the islands with the connection of the population that we have in the zoos. That is the key. If we achieve that connection between communities, dragons and support in the zoos, we have a very good future. This is always a never-ending story in conservation, but one of the major achievements is that really all the institutions understanding the vital need to support the in-situ programs. That is absolutely essential, otherwise this, this organization wouldn't work. In reality, we have one single organization in Indonesia called Komodo Survival Program. This is the one and only that is working every day and night with the species. Me and my colleague Denny established the Komodo Survival Program in 2007. For nearly 13 years, we have been working in collaboration with the Indonesian government to conduct research and help to protect the species. The results of our research are highly beneficial in assisting the government in formulating policies that will support conservation effort. The help from the zoos are very important for our mission. We are immensely grateful to the Chester Zoo, which plays a crucial role in coordinating support from the IEASA institution. We needed that support from institutions. And the third aspect of working with the politics, governments, partnerships, institutions, goes beyond the needs of the species, but is as important to solve human differences as it is for the threat of the species. In many of the islands, they are stable, and some of them they are recovering, and that is fantastic. That is giving you a sign that the activities they're doing on a daily basis with the communities and giving the recommendations to the government, Komodo Survival Program are going in the right direction, and the, the population is, is protected. It's part of the very complex network, and they play a role as other species play different roles. But this one in especially is because it's one of the apex predators on the land. You can see that it's something deeper behind these eyes. Komodo dragon is very special to me. As an Indonesian flagship species, it is a privilege for me to be able to study and contribute to the conservation of this species. It's important for the people in the region because the local community on Komodo Island believes that Komodo dragon are their relative, which was born from their ancestor as their sibling. This cultural perspective plays a crucial role in the conservation effort for Komodo dragon as the community is motivated to coexist harmoniously with this animal. Caring about dragons means caring about Indonesia, cares about our future, cares about other species as well.